last class I have discussed uh, about the bearing capacity of pile in granular soil and I have solved uh, problems related to the bearing capacity of piles which is uh, in the granular soil. Now, this class I will discuss about the bearing capacity of piles in cohesive soil or in clay and then I will discuss about the other uh, bearing capacity determination techniques like the plate load test. And before I discuss the bearing capacity of pile in clay, I want to discuss um, one thing that in the um, IS code uh, recommendations of bearing capacity of pile in granular soil. So, here the I have used this uh, expression for homogeneous uh, soil calculation, but that can be used for the layer soil that I have done for the other uh, methods uh, for the problems that I have solved in the last class. Now, uh, one more thing that here uh, that these two charts we have uh, used that one is driven precast and cast in situ concrete pile and board precast and cast in situ concrete piles. Okay. So, uh, driven precast and cast in situ concrete piles are common. I have discussed that cast in situ piles can be board or can be driven and driven also can be cased or uncased. But board precast concrete pile, so board piles are generally cast in situ, but board precast concrete pile also mentioned in this IS code. So, let me just uh, discuss about what are the different types of piles based on the installation techniques. So, as you know that piles are in terms of materials are concrete piles, steel piles and timber piles and the concrete piles are frequently used. So, so that is why if I uh, discuss about the concrete piles only. So, in based on the installation technique concrete piles are Okay, so, concrete piles are mainly two types, one is cast in C2, another is precast. Okay. So, as I mentioned in cast in C2 can be two types, one is driven. and another is board and driven piles can be cased or uncased. Similarly, precast pile definitely it is driven and this is the another one where IS code has mentioned that is the precast pile in a pre board hole okay that is the this is code as mentioned so that means the precast pile is installed in a pre board hole i mean hole is already created in that hole this pile is installed okay so that is called the precast board pile or board precast pile. So, this is this is this one that means the board precast I mean precast pile in a pre board hole and then board cast in situ. So, this is the board cast in situ and this is driven precast this is driven precast and this is cast in situ driven cast in situ driven that can be generally cased or uncased. So, this is the total all the concrete piles based on the installation. Okay. So, and uh, the driven piles as you know that we are applying a hammer blow with a, a, with a certain uh, weight of hammer with a certain free fall and then we are driving the piles into the soil. And in the cast in situ and precast 
and the precast piles are casted uh, in the uh, casting yards and the casting situ piles are uh, casted in the site itself okay so and in the boat piles uh, hole is created into that hole pile is and based on that cast in situ or precast it is been constructed okay so these are the all uh, types of piles and definitely uh, the timber piles in terms of material timber piles and steel piles those are the driven piles which is drive into the soil and i have already mentioned where i will use the timber piles uh, steel piles and concrete pile we can use for any type of uh, loading timber piles for the if the loading is very less requirement of loading is very less and if the um, uh, steel pile is for the heavy loading all these things i have discussed Okay. So, this is the one information that I want to uh, share. So, next one that uh, I will discuss about the bearing capacity of pile in clay. Okay. So, similar to the sign bearing capacity of clay the resistance it will get from the tip or the base or and the friction. Okay. This is the base and this is the friction and the base one will be the C N C, C is the undrained cohesion at the pile tip and N C is the bearing capacity factor, A B is the area of base and alpha C U, alpha is the addition factor because the, the, in, in, in granular soil it was the delta friction angle friction between the soil and any other material, here it is cohesive soil it is the addition. So, this is the alpha is the addition factor and if it is soil versus soil then alpha value will be 1, if soil versus any other material the generally alpha value is less than 1. Okay. So, now this A s is the area of the sur surrounding of the pile. Okay. So, now uh, how I will uh, because here we have to determine the alpha value. So, how I will determine the alpha value? So, this is the table we can use or, or we can use this chart where it is applicable for driven and uh, uh, driven or your drill shaft both and here this is the undrained cohesion, this is the addition factor and or you can use this chart for different consistency of soil, soft to very soft, medium steep, steep to hard and this uh, how I will identify which type of soil is soft based on the CU value. So, the I will get this information from this table also. So, this table or this chart we can use to determine the uh, this uh, addition factor alpha. And then once we get the QU then if I divide it by factor of safety then I will get the Q allowable or sometimes it is called Q safe. Okay. So, this is Q safe Q ultimate divided by the factor of safety generally is 2.5 to 3. Okay. So, this is the factor of safety value 2.5 to 3. So, now I will solve one problem that a pile of 15 meter length with diameter 400 millimeter was driven in a homogeneous clay with unconfined compressive strength of 100 kPa, calculate the ultimate load carrying capacity of the pile. So, the unconfined compressive strength of the clay is 100. So, you know that the C u value I will get from Q u divided by 2, this is unconfined compressive strength is the Q u. Okay? So, Q u divided by 2. So, this will be the 100 divided by 2 50 kilo Newton per meter square. So, my C u value is undrained cohesion is 50 kilo Newton per meter square. Remember that if it is unconfined compressive strength it does not mean that it is the cohesive C u value. C u value will be half of that. So, in some problem directly C u value can be given in some problem is only q value will be given. So, you have to divide it by 2 to get the c u value. Okay. So, if the c u value is half, then uh, from this table or I can use this table. So, from this table that you can see that if it is 50 to 100, so this will be equal to your um, uh, I mean 50 to 100 steep or 25 to 50 is medium. So, our case u value is 50. 
So, here I am considering it is the medium range and the medium the driven casting C 2 piles is 0 0.7 alpha value is 0 0.7. Okay. So, that is why I am taking uh, that 0 0.7 if I even the use this chart here also 50 will be somewhere here. So, corresponding to the 50. So, it is also around 0 0.7. Okay. So, from the chart also I am getting it is 0 0.7. Okay, from chart also I am getting 0 0.7, from the table also I am getting 0 0.7. So, that is why I am taking the 0 0.7 as the alpha value. So, so my C u value is C u value is 50 kilo Newton per meter square, alpha value is 0 0.7. Okay. So, my q value will be q will be a b c u n c plus a s alpha c u. Okay. So, a b is the um, uh, area of the pile base, so which is pi d is 0 0.4 square divided by 4 c u is 50 and n c value is because n c value is always 9 based on the Skempton recommendation for deep file, we are taking 9 and d is here 0.4 meter. And this is 9 plus a c is pi d 0.4 into the l, l is 15 meter, l is 15, then addition factor is 0 0.7 and c u is, your c u value is 50 kPa. So, phi u value is 50. So, I will get the total 56.52 plus 659.4 that is equal to 716 kilo Newton. So, it is a homogeneous clay that is why that uh, a cohesion value in the friction and the bearing we are taking same, but if it is a layered soil, then uh, we have to take it in segment wise depending upon the different layers and that case u value for base and the side friction may be different. Okay, so, this is then if you want to determine the q allowable or q safe, then if you, you have to divide it by 2.5 of this q u, then you will get the Q shape. So, this is the one problem that I uh, have solved for the um, homogeneous soil. Okay. And IS code also recommended the similar uh, type of expression. This is for different layers. So, that is why they have given the summation. And this is A p is the a cross section of pile tip. N c is again here it is 9 and N c is again 9 and the C p is the average equation as the pile tip and C i is the average equation of the different layers. And here alpha value I will get from this chart. The I s chart difference is that if your phi value is less uh, C u value, if your C u value is less than 40, you can see then uh, your uh, alpha value is always 1. So, if your this is the term if C u value is if C u value is less than 40 kilo Newton per meter square then take alpha value is equal to 1 for the I s code method for the but generally we will follow the previous method. So, mm -hmm. that means, I s code method if you are following then you have to take C u value uh, if it is less than 40 then alpha value is 1 after that you can follow this ch chart or this curve and you will depending upon the different C u you will get the addition factor. Okay. So, <coughs> Okay, so, now I will solve uh, uh, problems for layer soil okay, for the clay of the layer soil because I have now solved the problem for only single layer homogeneous soil. Now, if I solve the similar problem for the layer soil, so pile in clay and this is for the layer soil. So, we have a pile of uh, length 15 meter. 
So, this is the pile and this is the ground surface G L water table is at the ground surface itself. So, this is the sign of water table and so this is the first layer, this is second layer and this is the third layer. Okay. So, this is minus 30, this is minus 10 meter, this is minus 2.5 meter and this is 0 meter. Okay. So, this clay is the medium clay, this clay is the soft clay and this clay is uh, 100 kilo Newton per meter square that is it is stiff clay. So, C u value for this clay is 40 kilo Newton per meter square and C u value this clay is 25 kilo Newton per meter square and C u value for this clay is 100 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay? Because these are the all <coughs> medium clay, so C u value and the length of the pile is is equal to 15 meter and the diameter of the pile is 400 millimeter. So, you have to calculate what would be the q allowable or q safe. Okay. So, here we have three layers of three different uh, the C u value. So, first we have to determine what would be the alpha value for the first layer, what will be the alpha value for the second layer, what will be the alpha value for the third layer. Now, if I go to the um, uh, chart, that here. Okay. So, for the uh, alpha value is given first layer is 40 kilo Newton per uh, meter square. So, 40 kilo Newton uh, C u value is 40 kilo Newton per meter square. So, it is 25 to 50. So, it is medium. So, for the medium this is the driven pile is this alpha value is 0 0.7. Next one is 25 is the um, uh, your uh, C u value. So, it is in the soft range. So, for the soft soil it is 1 and third one is the 100. So, 100 will be the steep range. So, for the steep soil 100. So, we are taking it is uh, 0.45 because in the in the steep soil it is 0.4 for the 100 because and but from the chart also if I get which from the chart if it is 100 then this value is around 0.45 because this is the 100 and so from the chart this is 100 this value is also 0.45. So, from the chart I am taking 0.45 from the table also it is 0.4. So, I am taking 0.45. So, if I so this is the uh, problem. So, alpha value I am taking for the first layer is 0.7 and here second layer it is the soft soil. So, you will get the table it will or the from the curve uh, chart that is given it is 1 alpha for C u 40 kilo Newton per meter square it is 0 0.7 and here it is taking 0 0.45. Okay. And here the length of the pile for the first layer it is 2.5 then second layer it is 7.5. 10, then 15. So, this layer is another 5 meter because total length of the pile is 15 meters. So, my now I will first calculate the Q U Q P U Q P U is A B into Q P U and it is A B C U N C. Okay? And this A B is the area of the pile base. So, 0.4 square divided by 4 and C u this pile uh, is 
the base is and third layer where C u value is 100. So, you will take 100 is the C u and N C is 9. Okay. So, this value is coming out to be 113 kilo Newton per meter square. Similarly, now I will calculate the um, Q f and Q f for the all the layers. So, it is the summation of A s into alpha into C u alpha i C u i okay, A s i i equal to 1 to n here n is 3 because we have 3 layers. So, for the A s as it is the uniform diameter pile. So, A s will be same for A s area outside diameter is same for all the layer. So, I can write pi into d is 4 and L will change for different layer. So, first layer the L value is 2.5 meter where first layer alpha is 0 0.7 and C u is 40 kilo Newton per meter square. For the second layer, your length is 7.5 meter. For the second layer, length is 7.5 meter. This is the length is 7.5 meter. Alpha value is 1 and C u value is 25. For the third layer, length is 5 meter then alpha value is 0 0.45 and C u value is 100. So, the total uh, Q f is coming out to be 606 kilo Newton is the total Q f. So, Q u will be Q p u plus Q f. So, this is Q p u is 113 plus 606 is equal to 719 kilo Newton. So, Q allowable is equal to 719 divided by 2.5. So, this is equal to 287.6 kilo Newton. So, the safe load carrying capacity of this pile is 287.6 kilo Newton. So, you can see here because this pile is not rested to any farm strata. So, it is uh, within the clay. So, it um, um, your majority of the contribution is from the friction which is 606 compared to the T p is 113. But if the pile is rested on a so in the on a on a on a hard stratum like sand then majority contribution may come from from the bearing deep resistance as compared to the friction because those types of piles are called the bearing piles and this type of piles are called the friction piles. Okay. So, the next problem that I will solve that if this pile is on layer soil, but the layer may be both sand, sandy soil as well as the clay soil then what will happen. Okay? So, that means, in layer soil the pile in sand clay layered soil. Okay? So, I have done the only sand layer soil case, I have done the only clay layer soil case. Now, this example I will solve if pile is in sand and clay both the layers. Okay. So, the problem that I have taken is that this is the ground surface and sometimes your pile cut off level I mean where the pile is in may be below the ground okay? or sometimes it can be above the ground also. So, but you have to take the length of the pile which is within the ground. So, here the length of the pile this is the cut up level and which is 1 meter below the so below the ground level. So, this is the cut up point I mean pile is end here, okay, but your ground level is 1 meter above the pile. So, if this type of situation is happen then what, what we have to do. So, that means, here 
this first layer is 4 meter, okay? but the length of the pile in the first layer is 4 minus 1 that is 3 meter. Okay? And this first layer is a loose sand layer with the unit weight is 17 kilo Newton per meter cube and phi 0 or phi uh, uh, dash is 29 degree. Okay? And water level is at the fourth meter. So, water level is 4 meter. So, this is minus 4 meter, this is 0 meter. Okay? Then we have a clay layer. This is a clay layer of soft clay layer where unit weight is 19 kilo Newton per meter cube and C u value is 20 kilo Newton per meter square and phi value is 0 because it is the soft clay layer and the thickness of this clay layer is 7 meter. Okay? So, this is 7 meter. So, this one minus 11 meter. Then the next layer which is dense sand. which is dense sand whose unit weight is 20 kilo Newton per meter cube and phi value is 40 degree. And the length of this layer of the of the pile in this layer is 6 meter. Okay, so, that is minus 17 meter the base of the pile. So, total length of the pile is four, uh, 3 meter plus 7 meter plus 6 meter. So, this will be the 16 meter will be the total length of the pile. Okay? So, because 1 meter we will not consider because it is in the cut off is at 1 meter below the ground level. Okay? So, but when you calculate the effective overburden pressure then you have to consider that way. But during the pile length calculation, we will not consider that length. And the diameter of the pile is taken as uh, 0.4 or 400 millimeter. Okay, so, what will be the load carrying capacity of the pile? So, from the table, you know that for the soft soil, your alpha value is equal to 1. Okay, you can um, see the table or the chart that I have given. I am just putting those values. I am I have taken also the these values from that table or the chart. So, that means the for the dense oil my k value is equal to 2 and delta value it is a concrete piles and remember the all the problems that I, I am solving is for driven pile. Okay? So, this is also driven pile. The previous problem was also in the driven pile. So, all the problems that I have solved till now is all are driven pile. Okay. And this is the um, delta value is for the concrete 75 0.755 which is equal to 30 degree. For the loose soil k value will be 1 and the delta is again concrete pile. So, 0.75 into 5 this is also driven and concrete pile. So, all the piles I am solving are driven piles and concrete piles. So, this is uh, 7 uh, 0.755. So, this will be equal to 21.75 degree. So, now I will calculate the value. So, now uh, let me uh, do the um, this earth pressure distribution on uh, this is the vertical pressure distribution. So, we have uh, 1 meter cut up. So, up to 1 meter this value is 17 kilo Newton per meter square, because uh, your unit weight is 17 and up to 1 meter 17 into 1. So, 17 kilo Newton per meter, squ uh, meter square. Then we have, so this will continue and up to this. So, here it is 17, this is the 1 meter minus 1 meter 
this is 0 meter and this is minus 4 meter. So, at the 4 meter it is 17 into 4. So, this is equal to 68 kilo Newton per meter square. Then the this will change and this is the distribution up to 11 meter minus 11 meter and this value is 68 then plus uh, 7 into 19 minus 10. So, this is equal to 131 kilo Newton per meter square. Then it will the up to the base of the pile. So, that is minus 14 uh, meter uh, sorry minus 17 meter. So, this is minus 17 meter and minus 70 meter this value is 131 plus 6 meter into unit weight is 20 for the saturated and affected is minus 10 and that will be equal to 191 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay. So, first I will calculate the tip resistance then I will calculate the friction resistance. So, Q P U will be because it is in the sand. So, it will be equal to sigma bar n q into a b. Okay. Sigma bar is 191 and n q I will take that for L by d is equal to 16 meter divided by 4. As I mentioned, you will take the total length, uh, but the phi value I will take corresponding to the base of the pile. So, uh, 16 points. So, this is 40. So, corresponding to the chart and I am using this, uh, this is the Tomlinson solution. Uh, so, that means, where I will get the n q value from that chart is equal to 132. Okay. So, my q p u pi d square by 4 sigma bar that is the base is 191 191 and then n q is 132. So, this value is equal to 3167 kilo Newton per meter uh, sorry this is kilo Newton. So, this value is the kilo Newton is the Q P U. Now, one thing I want to uh, share that we have solved the problem in sand considering critical length con uh, concept or without considering critical length concept. Okay. We have one case we have considered the reduced stress or the uniform stress as it is suggested by critical length in the critical length concept. Another one we have solved considering the effect total effective overburden pressure, because different researchers have suggested that uh, some researchers have suggested you consider the critical length concept, some researchers have suggested you consider you, you do not you do not consider the critical length uh, during the pile calculation, because you consider full effective overburden pressure. But for the sand layer uh, this critical length concept uh, is recommended. I would also uh, recommend that when you calculate the uh, stresses homogeneous or layered sandy soil, then you use the critical length concept. Okay. But, if the it is within the clay layer, then another sand layer, then in this case, first it is sand layer, then a clay layer, then it is another sand layer then it is doubtful whether that soil arching will really happen or not. Okay? Because in that case, we are not sure, because in the clay, this arching phenomena will not happen in that way, which has been uh, occurred in the sand. So, in that case, I would recommend that if it is this type of layered soil, you take the full effective overburden pressure. So, my recommendation that if it is sandy soil homogeneous or layered you consider the critical length concept and if it is this kind of layer where clay sand uh, sand layer then clay then sand then use the total effective overburden pressure 
because there is no guarantee it is doubtful whether this uh, soil arching will happen or not uh, critical length will develop or not. Okay. But in some cases people also check it the critical length check it for the individual layer. For example, that here this is a loose sand. So, you check for this sand whether the it is within the critical length or not. For example, that here for the loose sand my L by D value is for the here the L by D value L is 3 meter D is 0.4 meter. Okay, so, it is definitely it is it is not greater than 15 D. Okay it is not greater than 15 d. So, uh, or your L is if you take the L it is 15 d it is basically the L is not greater than 15 d. Because your d is 0.4. So, it is not greater than. So, here the uh, your critical length it is within the critical length. So, we can take the full effective over warden pressure, but is sometimes it is recommended if suppose this top layer is this there is a critical length existing because top layer is greater than the critical length. Then what will happen that you apply this concept in the top layer, then you continue that thing for the second layer also, but my recommendation that you use uh, because as it is doubtful. So, in this case we use the total effective overburden pressure that I have done in this case. Okay. So, this is the Q U P 3167 and um, uh, so here uh, uh, I am stopping this class here uh, and the next class I will solve the friction part. Okay, I have so determined the tip resistance that is 3167 kilo Newton. In the next class, I will calculate the friction resistance, then I will add that. Okay, thank you.